check one, two.
So like check one, two. You have to know how to use the microphone. And, and, no, and, 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 and. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. This morning, our story is entitled Mango Time. Jessica's daddy had to leave for a whole year on special assignment. When Jessica's dad told her, she was so, so disappointed. Check one, two, two, one, two. Ready? together to worship God together. We are not physically together, but we are one in the spirit. Amen? Amen. And so this morning, we are coming live from the Lighthouse Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we are about to begin our service with the singing of hymns. We invite you to join us. We invite you to call your friends and your neighbors. And let us have a wonderful time together in the house of the Lord. We are going to begin with prayer. So bow your heads where you are as we pray. Our great God and our Father, we are thankful this morning. We are joyful in our hearts because you have saved our lives to see another Sabbath day. We are thankful, O oh God, that we can gather in this fashion to share your word and to give praises unto your name. We thank you, O oh God, for those who are going to be joining us in this fashion to worship you today. We're asking for your Holy Spirit presence to be with us and to be with all those who will be worshiping and fellowshipping with us. We are asking you, Lord, that your spirit will come down and glory will fill our souls. And at the end of the day, Lord God, we will say it was a good experience to be in the presence of the Lord. As we give songs of praise to you now, we pray that you will enjoy our praise and that we will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God and bless of all the we. Heavenly beauty shine. 
is coming, coming is coming soon, I know. Coming back to this earth again. And the weary, and the weary pilgrims will to glory go. Our next hymn is 499. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What father's world oh yes it is no matter what's going on hymn 92 this is my father's world and we'll do the first and the last stanza this is my father's world <laughs> my father's word and to my listening hear all nature sings that around me rings the music of the stairs this is my father's word I rest me in the dark of rock Lord is king, let 
fed our cares aside, we leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. On this your holy day, we come to give you praise. morning church family. Happy Sabbath. I sincerely hope that you have had a good week this week. Has God been good to you this week? Did he protect you from harms and dangers this week? Did he put food on your table this week? Did he kept you from accident this week? Were you in the hospital this week? If all those questions you can answer in the affirmative, then God has been good to you and to all of us. And so this morning, I just want to say a very special welcome to all our visitors or viewers. Wherever you're viewing from, we just wanted to welcome you here again today. And I sincerely hope that you will have a blessing that God has promised us today. I just have a couple of announcements. And my first announcement I want to share with us that we have an addition to our church family this week. Brother and Sister Shoot gave birth to another baby girl. Her name is Evia Sonia. Zebalo shoot. I will encourage every single one of us to give them a call and to let them know how happy we are to welcome baby Zabella into this lighthouse family. We know that God has been good because even in this pandemic period of time, God has protected them that the child could have been delivered without any problem. And this child was born on the Friday, the 24th. So just let them know that we are so happy to welcome them this morning. I just want to give you a little update as to where we are here in this area with the coronavirus situation. As of Friday, we have 4,570 in Fort Lauderdale area alone. 4,570. In other words, from Thursday to Friday, it went up by 255 um, cases. It simply means that it is still growing here in Florida, and we must continue to keep our distance. So let us not um, become too complacent. Let us do what the CDC said what we must do, keep our social distancing so that we would not become affected by this disease. 
I also want to encourage us that you continue to tune in to the Wednesday evening meetings. Uh, it has been very informative. The program is very good. And as a result of that, we are encouraging all of us to tune in. I am also encourage us on Sabbath mornings, when you are tuned into the Sabbath school, there are those of us who kept forgetting to mute your phones. And it is having no ends of interruptions. I am appealing to us publicly here, please, wherever you are listening or calling from, please mute your phone so that the program can be smooth sailing. I also want to encourage us this uh, morning that we must tune in this evening for the AYM program. I have been listening silently and the program is very, very informative. And so I am sure, as a matter of fact, I am confident that this evening program will be just as good. So these are all the announcements I have for you at this time. We will now join our voices together as we come together to sing hymn number 318. Let us sing joyfully this morning, hymn number 318.
children's story time. fortunate to have two kids here with us this morning and we want to welcome our children in radio not radio <laughs> we want to welcome our children who are joining us from the media and today's story is entitled the pink sweater now Savannah I want to ask you do you like pink yes Pink is a very beautiful color. And do you like sweaters? Yes, and sweaters keep us warm. But nowadays they make sweaters so fashionable, you know? And so this story is about a little girl. Her name is Kenya Jane. And Kenya Jane, she, grow, she, grow, she, she was grown in a Christian home. So her parents teach her, you know, about Jesus. Her parents teach her wrong from right. So she can know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to her mind. And if she's going to make a bad decision, she knows that the Spirit of God will direct her pathway. Anyway, like any little girl, uh, children in general want to fit in. They want to have friends. They want people to like them, right? You, you want persons to like you, don't it? Yes, and John, you, you have friends? What is the name of your friend? Um, Daniel... Or Wendy. Okay. What's the name of your friend, Savannah? Karani and Layla. Layla and Karani. All right. So children like to have friends. And, you know, uh, Kenya Jane was just a little bit older than you guys. But nevertheless, she wanted to fit in. And there were these two new girls that came to her school. Their, their names were Molly and Lisa. Now, these were pretty girls, and soon they became very popular. But guess what? These girls actually seemed to like Kenya Jane and wanted her to be friends. And Kenya Jane was so excited. She wanted to have these girls as her friends. Now, there's a rule at home by her mom and her dad. And that rule is that she cannot have friends who she doesn't want to bring home to meet mom and dad. Because chances are, if those friends cannot meet mom and dad, it means that they are not worthy to be her friends, right? So she, she wanted to invite those girls, but not just yet. So on this particular day, they were riding their bikes. Do you have a bike, Savi? What color is your bike? Pink? Pink and blue, nice. What color is, oh, John, you don't have a bike, do you? <laughs> okay, so John lost his bike. But they were riding their bikes up the street. And you know, when you're riding your bike on the street, children, you have to be very careful because it it's pretty, can be pretty dangerous. Drive in the road and don't look left and right, a car might run over you. Very good. So you have to pay attention when you're riding on the street. Anyways, they, they were riding because they were on their way to the department store. And Kenya Jane was a little excited because her dad worked at the store and at least her dad would get to meet her friends, you know, even informally, but still, you know, that should count, right? So they were excited and they were riding and they were a little ahead of her and she was pedaling fast as she can to catch them back until they reached a stoplight. But the, the light turned red. Just as she was about to catch them back, the light turned red. And Molly was saying, come on, come on. There's nothing on the street. 
Now, do you think Kenya Jane should should follow her friends and break the light? Do you think so, Savannah? No. No, she shouldn't. But you know, she a car might run over, but there was no car coming. So Molly was saying, "Come on, it's the road is clear. It's okay for you to come." And and so Kenya Jane pushed her bike ahead a little bit, and then she remembered mom and dad, and she said. This is something, in her mind, she said, you know, this is something mom and dad would call peer pressure. And this is something that they wouldn't want her to give into. So she put her foot back on the pavement and she waited until the light turned green. Now she caught them up and they were saying, wow, such a law abiding citizen. They almost made it seem as if it was a bad thing, you know? Anyway, she kept riding with them until they reached the department store and they went inside and they were all excited now because I know girls like to go shopping. Isn't that right, Sherida? <laughs> they went shopping and so they started to try on things and from the get-go, these two girls seemed to be showing a little meanness because at first they took a sweater that Kenya Jane thought was pretty ugly. I mean, orange is a nice color, but the... the, the the, 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 the blouse that they were saying that she should, that would fit her seemed like it was not so nice. But, you know, she wanted to fit in and she wanted the girls to like her. So she said, oh, okay. She didn't want to show that, oh, I don't really like that. Now, when you have friends that try to make you feel bad, are those real friends? No, but, you know, Kenya was young and she would learn. So she kept, you know, hanging around with them in the store until they ran over to the clearance section. And yes, the girls saw some nice looking sweaters. I mean, there was only one of each. And when they looked, they saw three that was their size. Say, yes, the sweaters are still here. And Kenya, you can get the pink one. That's hot pink, it looks good. It looks like it would fit you. And yes, Kenya loved that pink sweater. It had a beautiful, snowflake on the front and then all of them would be in the same sweater each with different colors so Molly would get the blue one and Lisa would get the the green one and Kenya Jane would get the pink one now guess what happened now they let me tell the story John <laughs> they looked at the price now it was on clearance so Lisa was saying oh well with clearance, it's going to cost only $20. Can you imagine such a sweater for only $20? But that's what Lisa said. But Kenya Jane, Kenya Jane stopped for a minute and said, oh, oh. And they say, what? What's wrong? And she said, well, I only have $10. And... With my father's store discount, I, I still wouldn't be able to get it uh, for $20. It wouldn't be enough. So she was trying to explain to her friends that, you know, she was so excited. She wanted to, to wear this one like what they were wearing, but she simply didn't have enough money. Lisa looked at her and said, girl, your dad works at the store and you're worried about getting a sweater that you want? If my dad worked at the store, he would have to get me the sweater that I wanted. You know, um, Kenya Jane felt bad because she, she really wanted to be a part of the girl. She said, well, it seems as if you don't want to be a part of our girl club. And she was ready to storm out the store. So Kenya Jane said to her, hey, wait, I'll get the money and I will be able to get the sweater by tomorrow. And they just looked at her and, and walked off. How do you think that made her feel? Unhappy. Unhappy, right? Because she really wanted to be friends with these girls. So anyway, she left because she was thinking now, how can I possibly make up my $10? I don't know. And she thought about it all evening. She went home, she had supper, and she, she went up to her room. And she shared room with her sister. And it's so happened that the same $10 she got as a allowance, her sister got it too. And her sister left her $10 on her little dressing table. 
But guess what? Her sister was gone to spend two days with her grandmother, and she was not there. So Kenya Jane thought about it, and she said, well, I'm sure my sister wouldn't mind if I borrowed her $10. I'm going to give her back. I'm sure if I had asked her, she would have said yes. But she won't be coming back for two days. And by then, somebody would have bought the sweater. So she took up the money. Now, do you think that this was a good thing to do? Was this stealing, or was it that she was just borrowing from her sister? What do you think? So Savannah said it's stealing because she didn't ask permission, right? She didn't get permission. Okay, so anyway, she took it and she ran back to the store because she said, yes, I can, I can reach the store before the store closes. And she went to the store. She almost forgot that her dad was at the store. So she took up the sweater and she went to the front uh, to go into the checkout line. And then her father said, hey, honey, you came to walk an old man home? And she said, um, yes, daddy, but I need to purchase something first. And she said, okay. So she went to the, the line, and there was this lady that had some stuff in her cart, and it seemed like she had so many things in her cart, and she just wanted to cash out. But while she was there in the line, she started to think. And she was trying to imagine herself walking with the girls, and they all had the same sweaters and how nicely they looked. But for some reason, the only face that she could see was the face of Jesus. She could, it's like something was telling her, what you're doing is not right. Whose voice do you think was, was telling her that? Jesus. You think Jesus was speaking to her in her mind? Okay, so she went, and the store clerk, of course they know her, because her dad worked at the store, and the store clerk said, Hi, Kenya Jane. Oh, what a beautiful sweater. And with your store discount, this will cost you. And before she could tell her how much it cost, she ran back and said, no, I changed my mind. And she said, no, Satan, no, no, I am not going to do this. And she ran back and she placed the sweater down on the clearance rack. And she said, no, I'm not going to do this. Do you think she made a good decision? Yes. And she said, Daddy, you know what? Jesus just helped me out of a situation. And Daddy said, really? You're going to tell me on your way home? And she said, yes, I'm going to tell you on my way home. But Jesus just helped me out of a situation. And when she told her father what was the situation and how she wanted to be a part of that group and stuff, she said, Daddy, something told me that Jesus would not be happy with that decision. And those girls are not the best friends I need to have. Daddy said, well, that's a good, you have made a good decision, my daughter. That's very impressive. And she said, but Daddy, I would, would, I, I would still want to have them as friends, though, even though. And Daddy said, well, the only place I would want you to come with those girls are to our house. <laughs> You're not going anywhere with them. And that's okay. And she said, yes, Daddy, because I would want to share the love of Jesus with them. Because Jesus loves them too. Do you believe that Jesus loves everyone? Do you believe that Jesus loves people, even those people who are bad? Yes, but it doesn't mean that we cannot associate with them, but we should never allow them to lead us the wrong way. Never allow peer pressure to make us do the wrong thing. All right? Did you like that story? All right. What do you want to say, John? If people lead people, if anyone leads God people with Satan in their mind, they're going to follow them as Satan. Right. So what John is saying is that we should allow God's people to lead us and not those who don't know God, who has Satan in their mind. He's clarifying that to me. All right. So we're going to pray. And I'm going to invite Savannah to pray this time. I'm going to ask Savannah to come. And pray. You have to speak loudly because the mass will take away some of your, your sound. So we're going to close our eyes, boys and girls, wherever you are, as Savannah will pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, John. Kids under construction.
Happy Sabbath, church. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. Matthew 19, verses 16 through 22. Beginning. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest me thou good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This ended the reading of God's holy word. Amen. It is now time for prayer. We we come into the house of God because this is a house of prayer. And we know that burdens are lifted at Calvary. I know we are not in the sanctuary, but I know your, your presence is here. And if you have a challenge this morning, if you have a problem this morning, Whatever the situation is that may be bothering you, I assure you that God still hears and answers prayer. I'm inviting you to kneel wherever you are as we lift our hearts and our minds to our Heavenly Father in this wonderful medium of prayer as we sing, Oh, it is Jesus. is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus that gives us the privilege to come bowing before him this morning in praise and worship. This morning, Lord, we come bowing before you in adoration because of who you are. Because of who you are, God, we will praise you. Because you are the Rose of Sharon. You are the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Oh God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. And so it is a pleasure to kneel before your wonderful throne this morning where we can come uninhibited. This morning, Lord, we're thankful that we serve the God of creation. We're thankful that we have a time when we can set aside because you had given it to us intentionally. It is your desire for us to meet in this fashion, in your house, to worship and adore your name. And so we thank you, God, for this 
time that you have given to us. We come, God, because we want to praise you with all our being. We want to lift up your name for all the blessings that you have afforded us from the beginning of the week until now. Lord, you have carried us through many dangers. There were many traps that the enemy set for us. But God, you flew them all. Because it was not for the enemy to do his own will with us. You brought us this far. And we want to praise you for sustaining us. We want to praise you for providing for our families, Lord. You provided food and clothing and shelter for us. We are extremely thankful this morning because you are a God who never fail. You are our protector. You are our provider. You are our comforter. Lord, you are our friend. And indeed, Lord, you surround us with your everlasting love. So we have hearts of praise and gratitude this morning. We want to thank you for the prayers that you've answered in our lives. We want to thank you for those who are that are waiting to be answered. We want to thank you, God, in advance for the request of your people, those who are listening to me from different parts of the world. Lord, I want to thank you for those prayers that are going up, that people are reaching out to you by faith. And I want to thank you, God, for the answers that are waiting on them. Father, we know that you know all things. We know and we trust that you have everything under your control. And when things seem to be not going the way we want it, God, we know that you are still in charge. Father, we look upon our world today and we recognize that there's chaos and confusion. There's disappointment, oh God. There's sadness. There's depression. People are not sure of what to expect because, oh God, their lives have been turned upside down but God we have the confidence that we serve a mighty God and we believe oh God that you are working things out for your children today we come in your sanctuary to hear a word from you we come with our heavy burdens oh God that we want you to lift those who are contemplating the things that they're experiencing oh God those who are losing faith those who are worried those who are depressed, Lord, we give them to you and we ask that you will do for them what no man can do. Father, we are asking that you will touch somebody who is sick at this moment. We are praying that you will heal some broken heart. Set some captive free, dear God, whatever captivity, even if it is not a physical captivity, dear God, some of us are under different captivity. And I pray, oh God, that somebody will be relieved of their burden today, even as they hear the dropping of your word. Lord, we thank you for your maid servant today, who has made herself available to be used by you. We pray, mighty God, that you will anoint her. We pray that you will touch every fiber of her being. Help that she will be molded into your likeness even while she is speaking your word. I pray that you'll open her ear so that she can hear the words that the Holy Spirit is speaking to her heart to share with your people. You will have a word for us today, dear God. And I pray that we'll receive it with thanksgiving. So I pray that you'll blot out every dross and every transgression that would have separated her from you. And that she'll be able to stand in the gap today so that your people will receive your word. We pray for forgiveness of our sins. We pray that you'll cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, we long to be perfectly whole. We want you to live in our souls, dear God. To direct our paths and to help us to make the right choices. Make the right decisions in our lives. So today we ask that you will not disappoint us, dear God, but you will, wherever your people are worshiping today, that you will visit them with a word from your maid servant. We thank you for what you will do. We thank you for the victories that will be won. And we praise you, God, because your name will be glorified today. Because you said that your word will never return to you void, but it will do and accomplish what you will. 
So we thank you for what you will do for us today. And we pray that our hearts will be subjected to your leading as we say thanks with the forgiving of our sins. In Jesus' worthy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Just want to say a little shout out to those who have been watching us. I have received a few calls this week, and some of you who are watching us from long distance, we just want to welcome you here again this morning. I sincerely hope that you are ready to receive a message, a word from our Heavenly Father. I just wanted to say to us this morning in Days of old, when leaders of certain country is about to go into battle, they would send for the servants of the Lord to ask if there's a word from God. We know that we are in a battle right now because this virus has hit the entire world. And so we know that God's have a word for us today. And so as we prepare our hearts and mind to receive those words, let us pray in our hearts that the message this morning will find lodgment into our hearts. And then when this program shall come to its conclusion today, you could say wherever you are from, or wherever you are watching or listening from, you will say it was good to hear a word from our Heavenly Father. This morning, the sermon topic is making a new start. And this sermon come to us by one of our elders, Elder Flora James, today. Before she comes to us this morning, there is a song of meditation. And so, there is a message I would suggest to you in that song of meditation as well. And so as you listen, pray in your heart that God will be speaking to you through these messages, both in songs and in spoken words. So Brother Latouche will sing, and then the next verse after that will be hearing will be none other than El Flora James. Hear her today. Jesus to come 
Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Can others see Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in his face? Can you look up and say, This is my Lord? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Don't cling to the world.
thank you, Brother Latouche, for that sobering question that we all have to face. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. God has been good to us. What you say? Amen. Praise the Lord. And with all that is going on around, with the virus, people dying, as children of God, we know that God can bring good out of evil. And I do believe that this is a wake-up call for God's people. We have more time now to get together and study the word of God. Church, personally, I think that is a call to remind us that Jesus is coming soon. And we know that this came on and us rapidly. But we are told in God's word that the last days will be rapid ones. And so when we see all of this, we need to put our faith and trust in God. He's the only one who can really take care of us. Today I'm going to talk about making a new start. And most of us need to make a new start. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you have given me an assignment today that I must carry out. But I will not venture to do it without you. So come by here now, Lord. Take full control of your servant. And we too, will work together. In Jesus' name, amen. Making a new start. A handsome young man once came to Jesus to find out what good thing he should do to have eternal life. Somehow he felt that he was falling short of something very important. He was a Pharisee, and Pharisees are good people. Let me tell you something about the Pharisees. They were a special class of men, about 6,000, whose lives were totally dedicated to bringing about the coming of the Messiah by living good lives. They were lovers and protectors of the Bible, as we know, the Word of God. Their oral traditions were established to preserve the true meaning of the scriptures. They were a people completely dedicated to God's law, and they loved the law with all their heart. As a matter of fact, they were so dedicated to the law that they developed thousands of guidelines around it so that they wouldn't even come close to the appearance of evil. On the Sabbath commandment alone, they had over 15,000 oral rules on how to keep the Sabbath. And these rules touched every aspect of their lives. That is the reason that they wanted to kill Jesus when he made the disciples break corn on the Sabbath day. That was a big no-no for them. They condemned the one who made the Sabbath, the one who gave them the Sabbath, because to them, he broke the Sabbath but he broke their tradition. Their interpretation of keeping holy is that you cannot even do good on the Sabbath day. Beyond all these qualities of preserving the law, they were filled with missionary and evangelistic zeal. They were good seven-day Adventists. However, in their goodness, they even lost sight 
of the purpose for Jesus coming. They thought that if the law was kept perfect for one day, that the Messiah would come. They failed to realize that the Messiah was there with them and that his coming was not for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Here were people totally dedicated to serving God. From the time they woke up in the morning until they retire at night. And they did not know that the one who came to give them eternal life was in their midst. Now, we Seventh-day Adventist members are like Pharisees, you know. We believe all the right things. And our desire is to do good. But here is a tragedy. Just like the young Pharisee, we can fall short of eternal life. And it may be necessary for some of us to make a new start so that we do not fall short of entering into the kingdom of God. First and foremost, we all need the amazing born again experience this is the new birth under the power of the Holy Spirit. This power is not in any human agent. It is the power of God. The blessing comes when by faith the soul is surrendered to God. Then that power which no human eye can see creates a new being in the image of God. Praise the Lord. Church, we can be good and yet not good enough for the kingdom. Think about it. Of all the people that Jesus talked about most were the people who to all outward appearances were the best of men. He never burst out at the prostitutes. As a matter of fact, when a prostitute was brought to him, by these same goody, goody men who had just had an affair with her, he allowed them to condemn themselves first. And when they could not stand that and they sneaked out quietly, Jesus, in his love and compassion, said to the poor prostitute, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus never lashed out at tax collectors. He was well aware of how they were robbing the poor people, the widows, taking their lands and whatever little possession they had from them. Jesus knew these tax collectors were big time thieves. But everybody knew that. They were not pretending to be goody goody people. He never lashed out at the careless and common people. But he did to these religious people who looked good on the outside. These people wore the right kind of clothes, they lived in the better neighborhoods. Their children went to the better schools, church schools, if you please. And they were all talented. Yet, they lacked something very important. Their religion was one of show, of good appearance. Their religion did not come from the heart. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan? The priest and Levite looked at the man that was wounded and walked on the other side. The priest and Levite were Pharisees. They are the ones who served in the temple. And it took a heathen man to take care 
of the fallen stranger. And Jesus is very, very clear on this point. Unless religion softens the heart and transforms the life from the inside out, it is useless. And I'll repeat that. Unless religion softens the heart and transforms the life from inside out, it is useless. <coughs> goodness is not good enough. <coughs> Let me tell you what goodness will do. Goodness will lull us into self-complacency and leave us immune to any sense of our real spiritual shortcoming and spiritual need. Christianity is deeper than goodness. A lot of good people are going to be lost. Goodness work on the outside. Christianity, which means being like Christ, works on the inside out. Church, the wrong kind of religion can be worse than none at all. For what that does, it prevents other people from getting into the kingdom, and we don't get in either. <laughs> I read a story of a girl, a young lady, who was sincerely seeking after God. She visited several churches of different denominations, but she kept feeling something was missing. So she continued searching and searching until she found a Seventh-day Adventist church. She was very happy because she found something different to what she was accustomed to. She desperately wanted to fit in and be a part of this congregation. She wanted to please the established church members and to do God's will. She was attending church just for a little while when she heard it announced that there was going to be a potluck dinner. She was overjoyed to be a part of this dinner. Having picked up somewhere on the line that potlucks are vegetarian dinners, she went all out. Doing her best to prepare a vegetarian dish, she was so excited to be a part of God's people. But the meal turned out to be a disaster. One of the one of the older ladies of the church noticed, hear me now, that the young lady's offering was not quite good enough because it contained cheese. And she was beyond eating cheese. And she sure let her feelings be known. As a result, the young lady's feeling was crushed and she left and went to worship somewhere else. While we do not and we should not condone wrongdoing in the church, a cheese dinner is not anything to lose a soul over. Sister White says in Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 53 in Christ's religion, Christ's religion, Christianity, leads men and women to God by exhibiting the character of Jesus. We need to exhibit the character of Jesus. That is Christianity. When the young men when the young man came to Jesus and asked, what lack I yet? He realized that something was missing from his life. He, re 
realized that Jesus had something in him that he did not have. According to him, Jesus was a good man by the way he addressed him. Good master. Now here are two good men. One good man healing the sick, causing the blind to see, casting out demons out of people. Demons are devil, by the way. So Jesus was casting out devils out of people. And most profoundly, Jesus was raising people from the dead. This told the young man that surely Jesus had something in him that he, the good Pharisee, the good Seventh-day Adventist, did not have. He realized that Jesus had life in himself, eternal life. The Pharisee was smart enough to know that you can only give what you have. And since Jesus was giving life to people, it meant that Jesus had life in himself. The question, what lack I, had more to it than just talk. He wanted to enter into life so that he could heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. And he was sincere. But behind his sincerity, behind his question, he was seeking glory for himself. Another thing that makes Jesus who he is, is the fact that he knows us. He knows where we are coming from. And he has the right prescription for each one of us. When Jesus went on the Mount of Transfiguration, he took three of his disciples with him, called them his favorites. The others were left at the foot of the mountain. And while they were waiting on Jesus to return, they were contending about position and having power in the new kingdom that they thought Jesus was going to set up on earth. No doubt they were saying Jesus went to his three favorites again to talk about executive matters in the new regime. Every executive body has a president, a secretary, and the treasurer. Judas was not one of the three. So, you can imagine him saying to the others, as long as they don't take away the treasury from me, it's okay. For no one else knows how to safeguard the money and count it well as I do. Then Brother Matthew chimed in. I hope that they remember that my profession is tax collection. And every country has a tax collector. Because they have to collect taxes. So my job is pretty well secured. And they went on with their bickering over position and power. So that a poor man brought his son to them for some help, and they were helpless. They actually embarrassed themselves. When Jesus came down from the mountain, the man brought his son to Jesus, and Jesus drove out the devil that was in him. So when Jesus and the disciples got together alone the next time, they asked him about the question that the Pharisee asked, only in a different way. Jesus, why could we not cast him out? In other words, Jesus, what do we lack? Jesus' prescription for them was strong faith, 
through prayer and fasting. And let's read that. Matthew 17, 21. Matthew 17, 21 says, from that time forth, 17, 21. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So some things we can only get done when we pray and fast. He said that this sort of life-changing thing can come only through prayer and fasting. So go, speaking to his disciples now, go and make a new start. Every born-again Christian has a similar experience. This experience causes them to change their values and philosophy of life at some point. And this experience the Apostle John describes takes place in the heart by faith. And we realize that Christians no longer love the world nor the things that are in the world. But when the good Pharisee came to him, having all intention to get eternal life in in him to do the work that Jesus was doing, Jesus did not send him to pray and fast. His remedy was different. Yes, he had to go sell what he had and give to the poor. Then he could go and follow Jesus. Each one of us has a different remedy for our malady. This also suggests that there are a lot of good people, good church members, good Seventh-day Adventists who are not following Jesus and need this prescription today. Jesus is the best prescriber. He prescribes just what we need all the time. And today, we too can make a new start. Some have to go pray and fast. Some have to go sell what they have and give to the poor. Others have to leave their gifts at the altar, go reconcile themselves to their brothers and sisters. Some have to stop bickering and seeking power and position in the church. Others have to return what they stole from someone else whether it's a name or a reputation. We do that too, you know. When we, when we finish with somebody sometime, they're not good for the sake of the whole reputation gone. We all have different routes to take, but all of us have to meet at the foot of the cross to meet Jesus, our subscriber. Each one of us has to take up our cross and follow and thereby make a new start. Jesus' prescription works. You take it, you get life. You refuse it like the young Pharisee and you lose out on eternal life. But we have to make the choice. But how can we call, fall short of eternal life? Aren't we good church members? Aren't we in church every Sabbath and Wednesday nights too? Don't we return a faithful tithe and give a liberal offering? Don't we have office in church, sing on the choir, and don't we keep the commandments? The scribes and Pharisees did all this and more. Christian righteousness goes far beyond all of these. 
Jesus says in Matthew 5, 20, let's get that. Matthew 5, 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. Have mercy. Entering into the kingdom of God is equated with eternal life. This was one of the most astounding sayings of Jesus. It almost knocked the disciples and the people who were around off their feet. Your righteousness have to surpass that of the scribes and the Pharisees. <clears throat> but at the next time he called these same goody goody church people hypocrites. Matthew 23, 13 to 15. Matthew 23, 13 to 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for he shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, make a long prayer. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. Verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, Ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Now, could anyone have more righteousness than that of the scribes and Pharisees? They weren't merely good men. They were the best of men. This church would do well if its members were as dedicated and zealous as they were. But Jesus is seeking to lead us beyond religious rituals to true holiness and godliness, which is real, true religion. A heartfelt religion that helps us to care for others the way God cares for us. Let Jesus speak to us today on true righteousness as we are about to make a new start. It is being merciful and being a peacemaker. Matthew 5, 7 and 8. It is caring for society's outcasts such as prostitutes and unbelievers. Matthew 8. It is his repeated admonition to mercy in Matthew 9.13 and Matthew 12.7. It is his summons to love in Matthew 5.43-48. It is to become like little children, Matthew 18.1-5. He, it is a call to humility, Matthew 5, 5. And it's an invitation to suffer in Matthew 10, 36 to 39. Holiness is all of these things that I just mentioned and more. It is giving a cup of cold water to the thirsty and it is to feed the hungry. It is loving God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and body, and our neighbors as ourselves. 
and let me remind you just in case you forgot that you cannot love your neighbor and backtalk them every chance you get and try in your own secret private way to tear people down to get ahead for yourself. Take them out of the way so you can get ahead. It does not work like that. Holiness, righteousness in the mind of Jesus touches every aspect of our lives, both inside and outside. Jesus wants, to, Jesus wants us to be opposite to what we are naturally. And for many of us, we will have to make a new start. John calls it being born again or the new birth. Paul calls it being a new creature. But Paul's description in Romans 12 to, to me is the best yet. And I want us to read that one together. Romans 12 to It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means we need a new mindset. The word transform comes from the Greek word metamorpho, the word by which biologists derives the English word metamorphosis. And since I am not too smart, you know, I consulted Mr. Webster. I said, Mr. Webster, help me out on this one. And he says, it's a mark or complete change of character, appearance, condition, etc. And Mr. Webster went on to compare it to the change that some animals on the go, like the tadpole to the frog. But I was not too satisfied with Mr. Webster's analogy this time. He was too down to earth this time with this one. I know that Paul was not thinking that when we are transformed, that we'll be hopping around on the ground like frogs. No. I like what happens when a slug like caterpillar transform into a beautiful butterfly. Hallelujah. To me, that's one of the most graphic illustrations of what happens to a person when he or she meets Jesus and have a new start. Jesus finds us in our self-centered, proud, self-serving ways and transforms us. Now, that is a miracle, and perhaps the greatest of all miracles. Jesus wants to take us slug like you and me and beautify us up and teach us how to fly. That's why I couldn't go along with my friend Mr. Webster this time, because he's talking about frogs. All that frogs do is hop and jump around on the ground and have people running from them. And I know God wants better than that for us. He wants to take us drag crawlers, paint us into beautiful hues, and give us wings to fly. And the best part 
about all of this is that he can do it. Amen. Praise God, he wants to transform us and give us a new start. He wants to make our righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. He wants to make us into new creatures. And finally, he wants to make us into the image of Jesus Christ. Jesus was very serious what he was saying, that Christianity is not easy. He's saying it's an inward motive of love to God and love to other people that is second to none. And that this love should constantly find expression in the life. Jesus used the word exceed. When he used it, he was speaking with all sincerity. Through the power of his spirit, he wants us to exceed exceedingly. When Jesus told the young man to sell all that he had to give to the poor, he was actually telling him to love your neighbor as yourself. These are the people I came to save. And you cannot love me and don't love them. Church, hear me today. How I treat you and how you treat me is where the rubber meets the road. Human relationships is where we live out our Christianity in daily life. Human relationship is the acid test to whether we have become true followers of Christ. Jesus did not only die for us church members. He died for everyone. Thus, we must treat others with respect. Jesus is serious because he knows that our Lives can be destroyed inch by inch by those who gossip about others, by those who treat others carelessly, and by those who are spiritually arrogant. Jesus is not playing games with us. He is speaking to us straight and clear, and his message is, that we need to be just as kind and understanding and loving to each other as the Father is to us. Nobody has done us worse than we have done God. And he still loves us, he still cares for us, and people are his creation. The young man fell short of eternal life because he was not willing to treat everybody the same. He was not willing to make a new start. As far as he was concerned, the poor would have to remain poor if they were waiting on what he had. So, the poor remained poor and he remained lost. What a tragedy. One of the contributions of Jesus' teaching is that he moves us beyond the negative side of religion to the positive side. Jesus brings us to the heart of the matter. If you want to be right with God, if you want to be right with God, I say, if you want to be right with God, you have to be right with your fellow men. The call of Jesus is the call to care for others. Others, Lord, yes, others. May this our motto be. Help us to live for others that we might live like thee. 
And when our task on earth is done, and our new work in heaven begun, may we forget the crown we have won while thinking still of others. Yes, even those we see as adversaries. And God knows that this is not easy, but it's Christian. It will make us exceed exceedingly because we believe in and enjoy grace, forgiveness, and love, it is all so easy to think that God is so easygoing that it does not matter to him how we live and what we do. But that is not so. God wants our happiness. He does not want us to fall short of eternal life. He's doing all he can to guide us through this life and to get us in the life to come. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Can others see Jesus in you? Are you willing to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in his face? Can you look up and say, this is my Lord? Are we ready for Jesus to come? He is telling us that the most important thing in life is the destiny of our souls. Nothing must be allowed to come between us and our eternal destiny. Jesus told the young Pharisee the same thing, but he turned away sorrowful. He's talking to us today. What are we going to do? And we are not only just to practice good principles in our lives, but we are also to teach others that they too will be willing to make a new start and not fall short of eternal life. And today, Jesus is calling someone to make a new start. Are you willing, right in the privacy of your homes or wherever you may be this morning, to testify to Jesus that you are willing <clears throat> to make a new start? If the Spirit of God is talking to you today, listen to him and confess to him. A new start with Jesus in your life is the best thing you can do. Will you listen to Jesus today and confess to him? Will you turn away from evil and follow him? or you will turn away sorrowful like the rich young ruler. Listen, he is saying. Jesus is saying, come to me. Come to me just now. I will save you. Yes, I will save you. I, Jesus, will save you right now. Please listen to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you and commit to him today if you need to, to make a new start. Forget everything else. Forget everyone else. No one have a heaven to put you in or a hell to send you to. Don't be like the rich young ruler. Accept eternal life today. Jesus wants to give it to us today. And there are people who are around who will help you, will help you to study the scriptures as you commit yourself to him. Jesus wants us to exceed exceedingly in his name. 
Let us pray. Father in heaven, I did what you asked me to do, and it's all in your hands now. Bless each one who listened to your voice today. Bless those who have decided to make a new start with you. And grant us all eternal life when you shall come. I ask this in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, and soon coming King. Let all the people say, Amen. May God bless you. church let the church say amen God has prepared such a message for such a time as this and so this morning as we this afternoon as we plan to make a new start let us do so with this request that is found in hymn number 330. Take my life and let it be. I just wanted to remind us that us, let us try to keep our safe distancing because the virus is still spreading in our area. I know that there are some of us who have become bored, but just remember that don't become weary because life is at stake could even be your life. 
So let us try our very best to do what we must to protect ourselves and others. I'll encourage you once again to tune in this evening for the AYM program. And as you tune in, may the Lord continue to be with you. And throughout the rest of the Sabbath day, just remember these are the Holy Sabbath hours. We must continue to observe the Sabbath until the sun sets this evening. Let us pray. Father in heaven, our desire this morning is, Lord, that you will take our lives and let it be. Consecrate it all to thee. Lord, help us to make a new start with you today. And as you make a new start with, with us, let us, your character, be seen in every single one of us so that others will see you through us and come to know you and to call you blessed. We thank you for the message that has been presented to us today. And as we go from here this morning, may your Holy Spirit continue to be with us so that we can reflect your love, your beauty, and your character. Bless us now as we wait upon you today. These mercies we do humbly ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Wow. 
shelter in the time of storm. Oh 